um, I've worked on uh, myself on Uruguay. Uruguay has been actually throughout the years uh, a very persistent um, uh, champion on, on climate change, particularly not in words, but also uh, to do it within its own borders. And secondly, uh, combined it also with uh, financial innovation. So my first question would actually be from where do you think that, that that comes, particularly the financial side, and how that connection between climate and innovation uh, was established. And then particularly uh, uh, recently, uh, Uruguay issued a landmark sustainability linked uh, bond that was heavily oversubscribed. So huge interest. So you have also to tell us a little bit more about that. But uh, first, innovation and climate. Thank you, Axel. A good evening to good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everybody. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, as you mentioned, Axel, we Uruguay has a long history of being uh, very innovative, and I would say on the front line in terms of climate uh, uh, climate change. So for the last 30 years, Uruguay has been declining the amount of emissions in terms of greenhouse gas emissions uh, in, in terms of intensity for the economy. And I, I would say that today Uruguay stands along the, the countries that is best positioned in terms of uh, livestock management and in terms of uh, keeping, conserving the biodiversity that we have, uh, conserving the, the, the nature that we do have. We are um, a major food supplier of the world, which is a very, at a very important time. This is very, very uh, important to consider at a very challenging time. So the, the main challenge that we are facing is how to increase the amount of uh, agricultural uh, production, but at the same time reduce the amount of emissions that come from methane and from uh, nitrous oxide, and to preserve the main grassland that is unique. Those that know Europe, know that we have this very green land with more uh, cows than people, and uh, to preserve the nat natural forestry that we have. In the last uh, years, I would say that we have taken additional steps in terms of electric mobility, in terms of uh, analyzing projects related to green hydrogen, and, and also in terms of preserving the natural forestry that we have. Uh, and I, let me say that Uruguay is one of the, in Uruguay, I would say that uh, agriculture is not a driver of deforestation. On the contrary, and that is quite uh, not, not the same in other countries. So, um, when we are combining uh, climate change action then with financial markets, it talks easier about this. But uh, as we have seen that, apart from many announcements that have been made over the years and certainly also since COP26, there have been very few concrete follow-ups. So one follow-up that came from your side was the sustainability link bond. So uh, first question is, capital markets haven't been that easy to accept this. Um, particularly now, why would capital market pay almost a premium for undertaking policies, as you're suggesting? And uh, what explains you the, uh, the successful introduction of this bond into the capital markets. What do you think were the key ingredients to its successful launching? First of all, as you said, and Uruguay was very clear on this in Glasgow in the COP26 last year, that we really need to deliver concrete results if we want to uh, work into a transition of low carbon global economy, we need results. We need to talk the walk, to walk the talk. We need to walk the talk, as, as we've said. So with that in mind, we have been working for many months in a very uh, coordinated interministerial uh, effort. Uh, and we have discussed a lot with investors the kind of structure that we wanted to present. Because the, 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 the bond that we issued has 
two very innovative features. This is, um, let me ex quickly explain, but last October, just some weeks ago, we should a bond where the interest payment is linked to two key performance indicators, two uh, environmental goals, that those goals are taken from the national determined contributions, that is from the Paris Agreement. So the first feature here is that we do have, it's the first time that we are mainstreaming NDCs into finance climate. It's the first time that a country has a direct financial consequence, has a, a, it's binded uh, with the NDCs. Here we have a two-way structure, uh, a coupon that is, uh, goes up if the, uh, the, if the country doesn't uh, um, perform uh, according to the metrics, to the objectives that it has chosen, or on the contrary, if the country has a well environmental behavior and outperforms the objective, then the coupon goes down. And the second interesting feature is that these two uh, key performance indicators that were, ch were chosen, the first of which is the reduction in greenhouse gas emissions in terms of GDP, again, taken from the NDC, and the second one is the conservation of the area of natural forestry, also taken from the NDC. These two uh, indicators, they are different, but they are complementary. So they all work in, in the production of the global public goods, which is environment. So uh, it was a, a long work. We had to present this to investors and investors, of course, they like the idea, but then they have to put the money into this product. So they, it was a very long marketing campaign discussing the kind of structure, this two-way coupon. And I think that uh, we got a lot of feedback from investors. And in fact, the, the second uh, um, key performance indicator or, or sustainability performance target, as the IGMA calls it, it was taken from the conversations with investors. We saw that investors were very interested in the conservation of, of nature and in biodiversity. And it, it wasn't until the, the last minute when we launched the roadshow that we were not clear uh, regarding the pricing of the bond. But finally, we, we feel that investors embraced the instrument. And when I say we feel, it's because the demand was very high, a very oversubscribed book, $4 billion for our 1.5 billion issues. And the pricing in terms of spread uh, and in terms of mutual premium was, was very, very positive. So how did we come to that? I think it was a, a great work, a great, uh, a big effort from the government, uh, supported by the, by the banks uh, and from different agencies. IDB was involved, United Nations, uh, and uh, the, the, speaking with the ratings, speaking with the second party opinion. So a, a lot of work. And... Uh, the market re receiving it uh, adequately. So it seems that uh, actually already the dialogue with mar market participant also helped influence you on choosing the two indicators uh, on the emissions and the deforestation. Uh, originally, you had sought to use an, uh, a, an index of many more indicators uh, on, on environmental social goals. Um, was that part of the dialogue where you opted for a little bit more simplicity uh, that that would uh, strengthen the design of this bond? I would say that yes, simplicity in this very complex structure, it's very important. And the other element is ambitious. I think that Uruguay has a long tradition of having a very good position in terms of ESG, but especially social and governance. So for us, the most uh, ambitious part was environmental issues for us, and I would say for, for, for all countries in the world, emerging or developed countries. So that's why we uh, decided to focus on environmental policy and mainstream environmental policy into economic policy. So with this innovation, how do you see how uh, multilateral development banks can uh, support this process? How can it insert or reinforce it? Um, 
where would you see uh, their role at its best, uh, and particularly in the best interest of the country? I think that the 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 best part of the of the bond is that we uh, implemented we, we put the incentives financial incentives in the in the um, environmental policy and that is a very very powerful tool once you put the financial incentives into economic policy in particular into the into environmental policy uh, then you can see results things start moving and what we did in the capital markets i think it's absolutely replicable not only for other countries in capital markets uh, and that in fact is the way that we looked at it as chair of the development committee in the world bank and imf we were so always thinking about the uruguayan case but also about this being able to be uh, replicated by other countries but also it can be it could be replicated in disbursement in the loans disbursed by multilateral uh, um, institutions so i think that the world bank is placed in a uniquely position to move forward to uh, address uh, what has to be done in a different way and to, and to present uh, different tools, new tools. So I would think it could be quite uh, easy to have this same idea of uh, link interest payment with the environmental behavior. So it's a way to differentiate uh, borrowing costs among different borrowers re related to the environmental behavior that they have. And this can push us out of the graduation discussion where countries, middle-income countries or middle-high-income countries, where we do our homework, we improve, increase GDP, and then we don't access uh, to funding anymore. For those who don't know what the graduation debate is, uh, Asusena is referring to the graduation from IBRD borrowing, and um, this creates indeed a lot of important questions that many upper middle income countries have major uh, challenges with climate change, and their continued engagement therefore is important. Um, also, as I said, it was uh, uh, until October uh, the chair uh, of the development committee and uh, took advantage of that position to also mention this type of innovations when we met uh, during the annual meetings. Just to give us a little bit of an, uh, more of an idea, how much do you think is the potential for Uruguay to issue this type of bonds out of its total bond issuance by the by the government, and then a bit more broadly, um, how do you see this uh, could be further replicated, uh, namely by other countries, not only in the region but in Asia and elsewhere? Uh, I mean, concretely, I was thinking this this would be something very uh, interesting, also. Uh, when we are thinking about the coal exit, if one were to have here uh, very clear indicators, uh, this could be uh, very interesting uh, uh, ways of, of thinking. The first part of the question is very uh, difficult to know if now we're going to go for this kind of bonds and, and we, we can't forget the plain vanilla bonds. So I think that this is very complementary to the rest of the funding strategy. Uh, but for us, it was uh, a very good instrument to really uh, make progress in terms of environmental, in the environmental agenda. If you really want to to walk uh, to to walk through a, a transition of low carbon economy, uh, you need to align uh, incentives, and, and that can be by issuing in capital markets, by dispersing, uh, or, or even. Uh, this is something important that we have spoken with the WTO. Even trade has to be, should the benefits uh, accessing market should be related to this environmental behavior. If we want results, we need to have uh, uh, concrete incentives. And that leads us to the, to the second part of your question. We do think that this is uh, a, a good instrument that can be replicable for any kind of 
of countries, uh, 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 any kind of country, and I think that also there is a, a, a big uh, uh, role for multilateral uh, development banks, but also for developed countries, they can support these kind of instruments because if we go back to the idea of, and, and this in April uh, of last, of this year, we presented this idea in the development committee of uh, considering environment as a global public good and even using the fund, the global uh, public fund solutions of the World Bank so that the step down could be uh, financed by this fund. So once you have, if you do have a step down that can be financed by the balance sheet of the multilateral, but of course maintaining fiscal prudence, uh, the financial uh, uh, prudence, the, 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 the rules, but also it could be funded by uh, a, a particular fund. And it's a way that you can attract money, resources from donors, from developed countries, and that they can help in this uh, in, in this kind of instrument. So we need the adequate support if we want to really make progress. That, I think, is the, 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 the final message. We are at a very challenging times if that require a change in the mindset, the way that we tackle uh, economic policy. Well, I think also uh, there is this combination, what you say, that uh, if there were to be grants available to help uh, basically buy this down uh, when uh, performance is exceeding expectations, um, at the same time, it can also work as, as you are right now uh, have been showing by the, by the issuance of this uh, of this bond. Uh, what I hope uh, out of this whole exercise is that we can tremendously learn from the countries themselves when they take on these challenges and that we actually are linking then climate finance and incentives how you use market incentives in a smart way uh, it is of course uh, much easier to always to say somebody else would need to pay for it but how you'd uh, put that system in in place i think is actually uh, great i think we need many more of these ideas let me particularly congratulate yourself because uh, you have been leading this uh, you know the uh, the markets well uh, and, and what it requires is, is profound knowledge of the realities of the country, but also of finance to find the, the sweet spot in which uh, there are openings for interesting bond issuance. And uh, I hope that uh, more will follow. Certainly, we would like to have you at the World Bank to uh, share that experience more broadly. I think this is uh, extremely interesting. But uh, let me just uh, finish by uh, congratulating yourself, but also Uruguay, that has been an, uh, a silent star uh, in, in, in pushing the environmental, the climate change agenda, and combined it with very interesting uh, financial policies and, uh, and introducing new uh, innovations in financial markets to make a def difference. And I leave the last word to you. Thank you, Axel. I, I think that we do have to congratulate Uruguay for, for the social and governance uh, fundamentals and, as you say, also for being the silent star in terms of environment. Thank you. Thank you very much.